Thanks for joining me again for another video to boost your video production business so you can avoid the errors that so many creators make starting out. Going into 2021, I've noticed a number of habits among my students that are keeping them from achieving their full potential and are, in fact, inhibiting their ability to hone in on the right clients and set prices they feel good about. Habits that are keeping them hustling every day instead of having the freedom to enjoy their lives. I've narrowed down these mistakes to the top nine so that you too can avoid these common pitfalls no matter where you are in your business. Up at number one is only thinking top shelf, AKA dreaming really big and failing to see the other opportunities. Of course, every filmmaker wants to land big business contracts with the likes of Nike, Coca-Cola and Adidas. But these brands are only front of mind because their marketing is already so good. Believe me, they've already got it in the bag which is not to say it's impossible, but don't let chasing those big dreams make you neglect the dozens of other opportunities that are waiting for you. Here's a secret. When I'm looking for a brand or sponsorship deal, I'll always look at who's in second or third place in that niche, and then I'll appeal to them and underline the value I offer by talking to them about how they can capture some of what the brand in first place has. I've gotten countless deals and sponsorships by following that exact method, looking at runner-up brands who want to be the best but haven't quite achieved it yet. There's more room for improvement there, less competition, and you can be the catalyst to help them achieve significant results. On to number two, thinking about quality over value. Quality matters, of course it does, but when it comes to the business of video production, you can't expect to land jobs based on the quality of the work you're producing. In fact, I'd go as far to say that your clients, or prospective clients, only care about the quality of your work insofar as it brings value, aka results to them. They're not so taken by flashy gear and slick edits and are instead interested in how the financial investment of working with you and your video production can bring tangible financial returns to their business. The DSLR revolution that made equipment cheaper than ever has made it so that quality isn't something that sets you apart from the competitors. Quality is an expectation. But where you do have an opportunity to set yourself apart is through the value and results you offer. There are a number of ways to do that. I'll leave a few links to my videos related on the topic of communicating value in the description box below for you to explore and put to use later. Now on to number three, competing on price. I see new filmmakers do this all the time. They think any client is a good client and any income is good income. And of course, having clients and making money is a great thing but if you're putting in tons of work and earning very little for it, you're selling yourself short. Slashing your prices just to secure a contract sets up a relationship where it's hard to increase your prices in the future, and you'll be so busy working for very little money that it'll be difficult to connect with value-seeking clients who are ready to pay what you're worth. To reiterate a key point from number two, you should focus on communicating the value you offer to your clients. How many views has your work created in the past? What kind of buzz has it generated? How does this all translate into actual profits? When you focus on value, it will be a no-brainer for your clients to invest in your work at rates that you're happy with. That being said, let's talk about number four. Many of my students think that they need their clients more than their clients need them. And this is totally false. I find a key part of business success is your own attitude and mindset. So many creatives, no matter their industry, take their talent for granted. They forget that what they have to offer is a sought after skill. And in many cases, a skill that has taken years or even a lifetime to develop. Developing an abundant mindset and approaching your business negotiations with the attitude that sure, there are hundreds, if not thousands of videographers in the world, but only you can do it this specific way is a great way to frame the work you do and sidestep the self doubt that often comes with it. Your skills are important to you and your work elevates the business you choose to work with. They need you much more than you need them. Keep this in mind during negotiations and you'll be much better able to approach them from a place of authenticity and power. Number five speaks to your talent and power to command high prices. And it's thinking that being paid less and having more clients is somehow better than being paid more and having fewer. Early on in my career, I thought I needed 100 clients every year, each paying between 1,000 and 2,000 pounds. But to do each of those jobs well, I had to commit pre-production, admin, shooting and editing hours, which the paycheck hardly accounted for. And as all filmmakers know, those are not the corners that can be cut. To deliver great services and great product, you have to make sure you have quality clients. 
These days, instead of overextending myself and hustling to get tons of clients who pay me very little, I'm happy to have about 10 or so, each whom pay 20 to 40,000 pounds. This frees me up to really invest my time and talent into each of their products and create real value for them. In fact, in his book Pricing Creativity, author Blair Enns makes the case that 10 is indeed the optimal number of clients for a creative firm. When you exceed this number, you start to experience diminishing returns, where quality is sacrificed. In at number 6 is overinvesting in equipment. If you're passionate about filmmaking, it's easy to fall into this trap. You see dozens of ads for shiny new cameras, and the influencers you follow on Instagram are making reels about their latest drones and gadgets. Everyone looks successful online and seems to have $20,000 pieces of equipment. But this is the honest truth. You don't need expensive gear to be successful in this field. In fact, you don't need to own much equipment at all. I, for one, don't own any camera bodies and instead pick, choose and rent what I need depending on the individual project. This helps my business remain cash flow positive and helps me avoid the immediate depreciation of brand new camera equipment. Many of the most successful filmmakers I know also choose to rent. But if you're personally committed to purchasing equipment like this, consider investing in basic equipment and learning how to use it really, really well. Because ultimately, your clients won't care about how much you paid for your camera and all the incredible things it can do. They care about the results that you can achieve for their business. End of story. And if that Hollywood look is still important to you, before you go spending thousands on new cameras, Remember that films like Captain America, Iron Man, and Black Swan all use the Canon 5D Mark II, which you can pick up for a few hundred dollars secondhand. I wonder if your clients notice which shots of those films weren't filmed on a red. That being said, instead of overinvesting in equipment, consider diverting those resources into investing into your own skills, especially skills that help you communicate the value that you bring to the table, like training in sales, negotiation, and marketing. Number seven is classic business advice that's so important it bears saying again. You can't be everything to everyone. You can't appeal to every brand. You can't do every kind of job. In fact, ironically, when you try to appeal to everyone, you appeal to no one. Having a niche helps you connect with the right people and hone in your marketing as well as your portfolio. Take, for example, a friend of mine who did some work for a restaurant that he was really proud of. He was going to immediately add it to his website along his usual work of sports and travel. I pointed out to him that his offerings are already broad and suggested that instead of just adding this new content, he should replace something on his website after considering first who his ideal clients are and what kind of content they're after. In this way, instead of making his niche broader, it remains defined. It's also given him a lot of direction about what he wants to shoot next. Choosing a niche can be hard, I know, but there's a lot more on this topic here on my YouTube channel and in my niche mini course, which I'll link below. The eighth mistake is super common in today's world, and that is not creating real, genuine human connections. It may seem a lot easier to send off emails and create digital proposals instead of picking up the phone or hopping on a video call. There's something about face-to-face -face interactions that makes us feel like we're putting a lot more of ourselves out there. Instead of sending off an email or two and hoping for the best, I'd encourage you to actually put yourself out there and create real human connections. Emails and proposals are boring, but conversations are meaningful and leave plenty of room to get to know people as more than business partners, but instead as actual living, breathing people. When a client has five proposals in front of them that are largely identical, they're gonna go with a videographer who's gone the extra mile to establish a personal relationship with them every time. Don't underestimate the power of human connection. Last but not least, and at number nine, is a broad but extremely unfortunate mistake, and that is failing to learn sales and negotiation skills. Once you start having those face-to-face -face conversations with clients, it's very important that you actually say the right things. That's where business and negotiation skills come in. Take it from me that running a business without putting in the time to learn these things makes your job a lot harder. Sales and marketing doesn't have to be slimy the way most people think of it. Instead, it can emphasize your creative talent and the way you bring value to each of your unique clients so they gain more than what they're spending. If you can charge $10,000 and your client feels like they're getting $100,000 of value, then you have a win-win relationship, which is exactly what you should be after. When I first started out, I was uncomfortable even charging £1,000 because I didn't understand my own value, and I certainly didn't understand how to communicate it. When I learned how to position and present the work that I do, it was obvious that I needed to charge more for the products that I delivered. 
This is something that takes most video production business owners years to figure out. But I hope from this, you can learn from my mistakes. There's more free content here on my YouTube channel, but if you're ready to take your business a step further, consider registering for my program, Video Business Mastery. Inside the program, you'll find more than 90 detailed videos with step-by-step -step instructions on how to consistently land high-paying, long-term clients. Along with the actual coursework are all the production and business templates you need, from shot lists and call sheets to release forms, contracts, and invoices. There are also group calls where you can practice your negotiation skills and members group where you can get feedback and mentoring from other industry experts and tons of support to hold you accountable as you take your business to the next level. And right now you can register for my one hour free training, 10 Secrets to Video Business Success, which is basically like a free trial. You'll find a link in the description box below. And stay tuned for more content right here. Until next time.